Hi there, welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you with the second tutorial how we're going to go further with the Weave Array op. So I'd just like you to follow what I'm doing, and after a minute or two, I'll give a brief explanation of where we're going to go with this. So just make a main loop. Now we're going to add a clear color op, and I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. And now we're going to add a depth test up. And you need to disable depth testing. More on this later. I'm going to pull this down. And now I'm going to make a basic material new up. And just zoom out a little touch. And now I'm going to create a spline mesh. OK, so basically what we're going to do today is we're going to get um, two geometries, two spheres, and we're going to output their vertices as points, and we're going to use them with the weave array up to make some really interesting things happen on the screen. So let's get started. So I'm going to go over here, and first of all, I'm just going to create a trigger extender to keep my tap patch a little bit tidy. And now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to grab the sphere 2 up. Um, there we go. Sorry, sphere. Just had a major update, so everything's got a bit of a different name. So I'm interested now in the amount of stacks and slices. So I go to stacks, pull it out, and create value. And this I'm also going to plug into slices. Now I'm going to get this output, and I'm going to plug it into geometry points. Get the vertices of a geometry as an array x, y, z. There we go. So I only need this to be triggered once. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to plug this in, get the sphere in the screen, and now I'm going to grab a trigger once, which means we output the geometry only once, which is more efficient. So let's just pull this down for a minute. Now, let's say that I change this value here to, say, 48. We don't see the changes reflected. So we've got a really handy up for this, and it's called trigger on change. So it triggers every time the input value is changed. So I'm going to grab this. And now, whenever I change the value here, this will get updated. You can see it happening there. This is just a really handy way to not have to press um, reset the whole time you change something. So let's just move this up here, tidy it up a little bit. There we go. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this uh, vertices um, output. And I'm going to plug this into an array 3x transform which allows me to translate, scale, and rotate an XYZ array. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to plug that in there. And now I'm going to plug this into the spline mesh. And as you can see, we've got this on the screen right now. So first of all, I'm going to turn the alpha down. So you can see something that's happening there. So these are the stacks and slices. And I'm going to go to the spline mesh, and I'm going to turn off line strip. So we now get this. So let me just put this on a black color. Makes it a little bit easier to see. OK, so you know what? Let's just lower this to, say, 16. All right, there we go. So I'm going to go to the spline mesh, and I'm going to put the thickness on a really small number, like 0 0.007. There we go. So I was a little bit confused with what I was seeing there. So now we can go to the stacks. Let's put it on 48. OK, this is more like it. I made the screen a bit bigger because they're pretty thin. OK, so we've now just got the vertice array from the sphere. We've output it to geometry points, and um, we put it into a transform. Let's just pull this up here. Now, what I can do is I can use this again. So I'm just going to go over here, Control-C, Control-V. I'm now going to plug this into stacks, this into slices. I'm going to get this trigger and plug it in there. And now I'm going to get this trigger and I'm going to plug it in there. And then just like in the previous tutorial, we're now going to use the weave arrays up. Okay. So we're going to get array one, plug it there, and array two. And now we're going to put the chunk size on three. And we're going to plug that into the spline mesh. Now, so far, no noticeable difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the translate on 1. And I might just need to update this. There we go. OK, 
and you might be thinking, wow, what's happening here? So basically what's happening is we got all the vertices from the sphere here as points uh, in space, and we did the same here, but these ones we've now moved. So if I now move this forward and backwards, as you can see, we're moving this sphere towards the camera, which gives this like really cool kind of effect. So I think the sphere is a little bit um, too big right now. So I'm going to grab um, the, I'm going to get radius. I'm going to pull that out and grab a value. And I'm also going to plug that in here. And I'm also going to plug this into the trigger and change. So now I can change the size, as you can see, there we go, great. So I can now get this Array 3X transform and I can move it to the left, to the right, I can move it up and down. As you can see, we can get some really interesting patterns. We can go over here to the spline mesh and make the, um, the, the lines a little bit thicker, but I'm just going to keep it like, um, sorry, like this for now. Let's put it like this, this is better. So I'm going to put this just on zero, zero, and I'm going to put Z on one, okay. So, actually 0 0.75. So here's an interesting thing now. Um, I can now rotate that second sphere. And as you can see, that's that second sphere literally moving through space. So we're drawing lines from one sphere to another. But when you do translation, uh, you move through space, you scale and you rotate. But the thing is, which one happens first, right? So basically, I want to be able to rotate this, but not have it um, move through space like this. I want it to rotate on the spot. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, no problem. You'll get it in a moment. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to grab another Array 3X Transform. I'm going to add that in between. I'm going to grab this trigger and connect it. So I'm going to use this one to um, rotate. And this one I'm going to use to translate, which means just move it um, through space. So let's just grab um, a timer two. And now let's plug this into rotation X. And let's plug it into rotation Z. And let's turn that speed up. And wow, as you can now see, I'm rotating the second sphere, but it's not moving off its, uh, off its center point, its pivot point. So this allows us to create some really, really interesting stuff here. So this is just to like get the point across of what we can do there. So I'm just going like, to turn this off and click reset. So we go back to the default. So I'm just going to make a really simple trick here to um, animate this. So I'm going to grab the frequency. Um, up, triggers every x milliseconds. So I'm going to grab this. Um, it needs a trigger in, so I'm going to give this, and I'm going to put it on 12,000. Okay, and now I'm going to grab a toggle bool. So it toggles boolean value by triggering. So every time it gets a trigger, it alternates between false, true, false, true, that you can see down here. So now I'm going to um, grab a bool. And an op, animate between two values based upon a Boolean value. I'm going to get the bool, I'm going to plug it into bool. This guy expects a trigger, so let me just grab this one from here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, replace the value here into rotation x and rotation z. And now we're only rotating one degree. So I need to put value on true 360, value false zero. And the duration I'm now going to put to, uh, say, 11 seconds. So you're going to have to just give it a minute. And I want to put it on smooth step. So in a moment, this is going to um, trigger. There we go. So now it's going to take 11 seconds to animate 360 degrees. We've got smooth step on, so it's going to ease in and out. Sphere should stay there for a second, and then it should come back again. OK, great. So let's just get rid of this timer. So um, this is a very simple setup, but it allows you to go really wild and really crazy because this is just with a sphere. So we can go to the amount of stacks here. We could put it on eight. We could make the lines thicker, and we get a very different result coming out of it. We could put it on 64, and then we get more lines on the screen by changing the spline mesh thickness, the color of the material, 
the alpha opacity, we can go for a huge amount of different looks. So let's just put it there for now, and I'm gonna put this back to 48. So it's really important, I want you to get that, that here we've rotated it on its spot, and then we've translated it here, and you get a very different effect if you first translate and then rotate. And the reason I've just split these up into two ops is so I know for sure um, what's happening, what the order of execution is. So you could also swap out these spheres for rectangles. So now we're gonna go a little bit far with the, the tutorial video. <clears throat> but no worries. So I'm just going to grab this stuff here. I'm going to copy it down, tidy this up, and I'm just going to copy this, paste it there, and paste it there. I'm now going to get rid of the spheres, and I'm going to grab a rectangle. Okay? I'm also going to give it this trigger. I'm going to copy this rectangle and put it over here. Grab this trigger. So I'm just doing what I did with the sphere. And the stacks is now going to go into columns and rows, which is exactly the same as stacks and slices with the sphere. It gives us a definable uh, amount of X, Y, Z points, like the amount of points we've got in the 3D field. So now I get the geometry out, plug it in here, geometry out, and I plug it in there. And now we're going to go to one of our good friends, click here in between, and I'm going to grab the array interpolate up. So I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to copy it, paste it, and drag it here. Ah, yeah, okay, sorry. It needs this to go into array one. This to go. Sorry, my bad. Got confused there. So we have two arrays that go in here. So, to recap, we've got the sphere array, it goes in here. We've got the rectangle array, it goes in array two. And we just do the same here. So now it expects a trigger. So we grab this, and we grab this. And now what we do is we reconnect this here. So why are we doing this? Well, let's look at this um, percentage amount. It's like the interpolate amount. Now it's getting a little bit busy. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to grab the value. And this is like the interpolation amount. I'm going to plug it in there. And now if I put this on one, we have two rectangles, which gives this really cool, awesome shape. And I can now interpolate between the rectangle and the spheres because they've got the same amount of points. So if I put it on 0 0.5, we have a mix between a rectangle and a sphere, which can just lead to really interesting stuff. So let's put this on one. And just so you can follow for that last part what's happening here, let's just grab an orbit controls because this can really reveal what's happening here. So let's turn the camera. As you can see, this is one rectangle and this is the second one. When we go ahead to translate, we can move this forwards or backwards in space. You can also move it up and down. And this allows us to create a huge amount of different looks. So I'll put this on one, this on zero, and I'm just going to put the interpolation on zero so you can see that sphere. Zoom back a bit. So this was the second tutorial with the weave arrays up. Uh, and the main focus was using geometry and geometry points to be able to weave these arrays together to make really interesting things happen with the spline mesh. So I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forums. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Bye.